Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. So hello everyone, we are live in Las Vegas for HP Discover. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And Dave, uh, this is our fifth season with theCUBE. We've interviewed over 3,500 executives, uh, thought leaders, CEOs, entrepreneurs, uh, tech athletes as we say. Um, and so we're back at HP and, and no better time to come back and see all the HP action. And it's an interesting story, HP, and I want to get your take on this as we kick off, you know, three days of wall-to-wall -wall live coverage here at SiliconANGLE.TV um, about HP. Obviously, um, Meg Whitman, really conservative on her turnaround plan. Um, by the numbers, Dave, I mean, she's not making any big massive moves, just steering the ship kind of away from the icebergs out into the warmer waters. I want to get your take on, on your, what you think of that plan, uh, state of HP, and the current situation. Well, there's at least stability at the top, John. Meg Whitman, uh, when she took over, said it's going to be a five-year turnaround and has been slowly turning the steamship around over the past five years. Now, that doesn't, doesn't suggest there's not been many, many changes inside of HP. Uh, HP, uh, quite a while ago, announced a, a lot of layoffs. They just recently announced they're going to extend that. Uh, they've made some changes in the ranks. You know, uh, Bill Vecti replacing Dave Donatelli. Just more recently, George Kadifa is being replaced by Robert Youngjohn, who we're going to have on. So Meg is not afraid, John, to make changes uh, at the top. So she's executing on her plan, according to her plan. Now, I've often said, geez, I wish it could happen faster. A lot of people say they wish it could happen faster, but they're throwing off cash, they're paying down the debt. I've also said, John, that HP has to shrink to grow, and that's exactly what's happening here. There are some growth spots. Uh, certainly, networking is a growth area. Uh, Meg calls out Vertica as a growth area. Printers grew a little bit, PCs grew a little bit uh, uh, last quarter. Uh, and converged infrastructure is a growth area from a smaller base. But in general, the company is not growing, and as I say, it's got to shrink to grow. Uh, it's ex say, extending those layoffs. The big challenge that HP still has, it's, it's a $120 billion company with a, with a $64 you know, billion market cap. So it's trading on you know, 50 cents essentially in the revenue dollar. Uh, but as I said, it's throwing off cash. And over the last 12 months, its stock price has gone up very nicely from you know, the low 20s and it's now into the low 30s and pops up even higher sometimes. So you know, by all accounts from Wall Street, Meg's doing a good job. So there's obviously some news going on with Apollo, some of the supercomputers. IBM also announced today that they're now shipping the availability of their Power 8 systems. Um, so certainly the, the game is changing. We're going to get to that in a second, but I want to get your take. Um, I was having a conversation uh, and with our editorial team and with some other analysts a couple weeks ago um, in a private meeting, and we talked about where HP could have been. If you go back to the Mark Hurd era, Dave Donatelli was on board. The trajectory of HP, their corporate governance strategy, their corporate development strategy, they had a bunch of acquisitions on the table. Um, and and we, we had the conversation of what could have been if you had connect the dots before that scandal, where HP could have been on a trajectory basis. And obviously what happened after that was well documented, and certainly we talked about it. But now Meg Whitman's almost taking them back to that same trajectory, which is their roots. They kept their PC division. They're keeping their consumer stuff. The consumerization of IT is now the hottest trend on the planet. Good call, good, good call there. Two, they're back into the high-end supercomputer market. But what's happened is cloud. The cloud market is decimating silos. It's decimating other landscapes like the server business, right, and seeing things like that. And so all those are changing. So I want to get your take. Where, what could have been, and is HP in that same spot now um, where they were hoping to be just five years ago? Well, I think, uh, I've, again, I've said many times that HP's got to get back to its roots, uh, which is invent, and HP, HP's got to get the R&D machine going again. And that's something that we all know, Mark Hurd cut, and he, and he saved that money, it dropped right to the bottom line, made Wall Street very happy, but now HP's paying the price. <clears throat> you know, ironically, he's an HP competitor, Oracle. Um, so, cloud, HP's been talking a cloud story for a long time, but the Helion announcement that they made a few weeks ago is, is now <laughs> looks like the real deal. So, 
you know, the HP public cloud is there, they're going hard after private cloud, they've made a lot of investments in the cloud, but it's taken several years for them to get where they can actually compete effectively, you know, with the likes of, of Amazon and, and others. If you're watching this broadcast, go to crowdchat.net slash HP Discover, that's our social chat container. We're going to have an active conversation, log in, be part of the thought leaders, be part of the social media digital crowd here who is organizing the conversations there in CrowdChat. Uh, Dave, there's a rumor out there um, that HP is in discussions to buy the Cube. <laughs> I just want to clarify that the Register had posted a story that said HP and SimpliVity are talking about buying it out. And they, obviously they make the Omni Cube. So if that happens, if the Omni Cube gets bought by HP, we're going to have a little conflict around um, you know, trademarks and uh, confusion. What do you think? Well, HP's, you know, they've shown, they've, they've invested in, in the media business, right? The journalism <laughs> uh, 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 museum down in, uh, <laughs> In, uh, in, in, uh, in DC, right, is, uh, is a big time uh, sponsor. Well, we would welcome the Omni Cube into the right. HP family. <laughs> but I mean, you know, <laughs> it's all joking aside, John, I mean, one of the things that I've said is HP's software business has to grow. We're going to talk to young Johns about this. Uh, HP is the sixth largest software company. It's about, you know, it's less than 10% of HP's revenue. They brought in, you know, the asset of Vertica. They, they paid a lot of money, obviously, for autonomy. Everybody knows about that, so th that's nice. But there's a lot of other software assets in big data, for example, and even, in, in even enterprise technologies. You were talking about a company called Docker the other day. A lot of excitement in Silicon Valley. Would that be a fit for a company like HP? They're not back in the acquisition game yet. They've got to get back into the acquisition game to grow. Otherwise, we're going to just bump along. So I think Meg's strategy is to pay down the debt, you know, stabilize the base, so essentially keep revenues flat for as long as they can, and then start the acquisition engine back up again. So here we go again, right? Let's talk about the supercomputers. Obviously the server battlegrounds are laid down. The low end x86 is, I won't say being sunset, but you, it's, just a, it's, just a, it's just a brute force business. Jim Gante will be on later, talking about market share. Cisco announcing UCS is topping on Blaze, but that doesn't count certain things. I mean, IDC <laughs> slices the numbers 10 ways from Sunday, so. Everybody you know, wins. You know, everyone wins <laughs> yeah. there. But really the battle's going to be in the high end. If you look at cloud, large scale data centers, the trend towards large scale computing, large-scale distributed infrastructure combined with the consumerization of IT really is, to me, the main drivers in this business. We will be covering that from that angle. And underneath the hood of all that is cloud, mobile, and social, uh, with the data science piece being a big thing. So, you know, I've always said, HP, if they can't get out of their own way, they're going to do well. Meaning, they have the assets, they got to get the morale up, trim down the fat, stay on focus, and I think they're in a good position. And again, they're fighting IBM on the server side, but now new territories out there, the big data business. I think the autonomy and Vertica opportunity is massive. I think they need to harness that. To me, the key, John, is, Meg will talk about the new style of IT. Uh, EMC, Joe Tucci likes to use the IDC term of the third platform. Here's the bottom line is, you have to show that you're relevant to the future, and that's what HP's trying to do, and that's what HP's cloud initiative really is all about, combined with, the way in which they're continuing their investments in their core infrastructure business, and as I said, they've really got to show growth in the software side. Vertica is, I think, a great opportunity to do that with Haven and Autonomy, and I think down the road, you're going to have to see some additional acquisitions there. So one thing I'm going to be looking for, Dave, here is to hear the leaders from HP around their infrastructure side of their business, obviously converged infrastructure, a big retool and a big reset going on. I don't say reset, but really more of a, you know, maintain the existing market position and get the new products in there, modernize the infrastructure. The big data aspect, I want to hear about the software side of the business. And then third, more importantly, I really want to hear from the cloud group. They have made some really amazing things. You're talking about the Helion announcement was pretty significant. Um, those, although may look like vapor on paper, we want to dig into that, talk to Sargalai and the folks there. We're going to talk to the variety of the folks Kerry here. Bailey, and all the guys on, yeah. coming on. So, so the cloud business is a driver. It's not mutually exclusive with their existing customer base. And again, this is going to come down to who can deliver large scale value for the customers that's truly multi-vendor, that's open, uses open source software, and can provide those fun consumer experiences to the users. Yeah, last thing I'll say is we are at an inflection point. You know, we talked about Docker, we talked about you know, the impact that that potentially could have on VMware. OpenStack is a real leverage point for HP. HP's going all in on OpenStack. We, you've talked a lot, John, about how OpenStack needs leadership. HP could be one of those leaders, if not the leader for the OpenStack community, and that gives them, I think, significant momentum in the new era of IT. 
Okay, this is theCUBE. We are here live in Las Vegas for HP Discover 2014. We're going, to be, we're going to be scouring this place for some great stories, and of course, hearing from the leaders of HP themselves. Watch the interviews, and again, go to crowdchat.net slash HP Discover. That's our new innovative CrowdChat active container. Log in. All the posts go to the hashtag. You can log in from Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook. We'll be answering questions on the crowd chat. It'll be open for all three days. Go check it out, and we'll be here listening to your questions. We'll be right back on theCUBE right after this short break. <laughs>